Congress expected to discuss the expulsion of Representative George Santos. He is speaking right now. Before we get to weather, let's hear from the embattled congressman, uh, again, who is speaking live at this moment. Let's bring in that press conference. Well, tomorrow, I will be number six in the history, the first Republican and the only one without a conviction or without being part of a, uh, or without having committed treason. So that's that's kind of where we stand today on, on that sense. But let me go down a few things here that to give you a sense of Congress today and what it represents for the American people. It represents chaos. Chaos because we have a house that doesn't work for the people. We have a house where we have members with severe allegations against them having the gall and the, and the the courage to call the speaker a joke. I read that today in Political. It was on the cover of Political where you know we're we're reading about members of Congress trying to smear one of the most honorable members of our conference in the Republican Party. So that's just where we've stooped down to. People with rap sheets who think and feel emboldened enough to go call out other people for their policy. Secondly, it's amazing to me that this House continues to want to push me out. Meanwhile, we have Secretary Mayorkas, who's committed absolute dereliction of his duty, has put all Americans in danger. If you saw last night, the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree lighting, which is something that for years has been one of the most beautiful celebrations in New York City, most peaceful, crowded, yes. But yesterday we had a band of vandals who thought it was appropriate to fight the NYPD. This is what took place just yesterday. And that's on Secretary Mayorkas, because a lot of these people, they're not here because they love this country. They're not here because they want the best for this country. Why are they here? It's starting from inside. And that's what you get when you have open borders and an administration that is oblivious to the real issue that's taking place. And then lastly, Let's talk about uh, let's talk about consistency. We have a member of Congress that earlier this year took a plea deal to obstructing a congressional hearing. That's not the plea deal he took, right? I'm kidding. He took a plea deal for pulling a fire alarm, a fire alarm which obstructed and delayed an official hearing and proceeding on the House floor. Now, had that been any other person, had it been one of the members of the media, had it been a Republican member of Congress, we all know that that person would have been filed, would have been charged with obstructing a congressional hearing, just like the somewhat 140 people sitting in prison right now because of January 6th. But Jamal Bowman gets a pass. That's why today at noon, I'm going to be introducing a privilege motion for expulsion of convicted and uh, guilty pleaded uh, Congressman Jamal Bowman. And I stand there. I think that that's consistency. Let's hold our own accountable, but let's make sure that we do it with the president of the House. Now, if the House wants to start different precedent and expel me, that is going to be the undoing of a lot of members of this body because this will haunt them in the future where mere allegations are sufficient to have members removed from office when duly elected by their people in their respective states and districts. So bearing that in mind, I'm going to make this a very brief and uh, uh, a comment on the on the process here that's taken place with the Ethics Committee. By admission of the chairman himself, he said that the process was not full throttle and not complete because it would require many more months in order for the committee to offer any kind of uh, uh, punishment. So instead, they decided to stop short of completing the process, going ahead and putting out a slanderous report, unprecedented. Nobody here's ever seen ethics reports of any other members who's been under investigation. But yet again, changing precedent for me, it seems that it's all fair game. So there we go. They go ahead and release this, this report littered littered in hyperbole, littered in opinion that would have no decent cop would bring this to a prosecutor or a DA and say, here's our report, go ahead and charge him. Right? So this is what the Ethics Committee put out. God bless them and what they think they're doing and what their work is. You know, I believe they do good work when it's relevant, but this, this ain't it. So with that, I'm going to make this a very brief opportunity for a couple of questions in an orderly fashion without screaming at me.
Santos. We'll go by hands. Mr. Santos. Santos. Go ahead. Mr. Santos, why didn't you participate in the ethics committee's investigation? They said that you were not cooperating with them. If you think this is such a sham, why didn't you participate? I cooperated. I provided them every single document uh, for the most part that they went off of came from my counsel. Go ahead. You said that this is a distraction to the institution. I know you've been getting this question a lot, but if it's really truly a distraction for the institution, why not just resign? Because if I leave, they win. If I leave, the bullies take place. This is bullying. The, rep, the chair of the committee putting out a motion to expel, just introducing it and not calling it its privilege, was designed to force me to resign. But he didn't even have the fortitude to go ahead and call the privilege. He had someone else do it, someone who's actually just recently done one on me, which is Congressman Esposito. So the reality of it is it's all theater. It's theater for the cameras. It's theater for the microphones. It's theater for the American people at the expense of the American people because no real work's getting done. Go ahead. You talked about a lot of the alleged transgressions of other members of Congress. Have you made any formal complaints to the OCU? No. I will be filing. I will be filing a slew of complaints uh, in the coming hours uh, of today and tomorrow to make sure that we keep the the playing field even. Because at this point, I have been nothing but generous and kind with my time. I have not raised my voice or a single finger against a single other member of this body. But now I guess it's fair game to continue to do that. Go ahead. Congressman, you know, I know you didn't want to get into this the other day, but. I told you I told you the other day I am not unpacking the the report it is counterproductive for me to do so at this time there will be a time that I will unpack it entirely and go line by line I will go line by line when the time is, is proper go ahead I want to get at what you're saying this morning about this being unprecedented um, number one we have in fact seen investigative reports from the House Ethics Committee before and number two um, we have seen a bit of Mike Myers removed from Congress before he was convicted for abstinence. He resigned. Uh, well, it, it, he resigned. That's did, the reality is he's resigned. Before he, was convicted. he resigned. Congress, right. Congress, Congress and Santos. Go ahead. Congress and Santos, you, you mentioned many members of Congress have rap sheets. Are you going to be naming them? Why, why not? Why not put? Why not put them? Put their names out of the front. The well, why do I have to do your job for you? I mean, do you guys, you guys like digging up stuff on me. Why don't you go dig up on other members? There's so many. It's out in the open. Go ahead. <laughs> you talked a lot about during this process you're being bullied. Why you feeling that you're being bullied? Why do you think you're being bullied? And why do you? Think I mean, it's the third time. And each time for different reasons, and they just keep going. I don't know. Ask them. I don't care. Go ahead. I know you've asked this before, but are the accusations against you true? I've said this many times. I'm fighting to defend myself and to dispel each and every accusation as soon as I have the opportunity. Go ahead. What do you say to your constituents who feel like they, you're not serving them while all this is going on? You see, that's not true. I've, I have two district offices in New York, and they, they're constantly busy with folks coming in for various issues, obviously, pertaining from the simple as a, a need for an expedited passport to more complex immigration issues. There is one thing that sometimes deters people from walking in is when we have crowds of media outside the office. And I'm not blaming the media. I'm just saying that that does interfere with constituent services. People don't want to be on camera. They don't want, they don't want that ex exposure of them. So, but the service is there. I nominated 29, 29 applicants to the uh, service academies, and I've already had four gotten accepted. And I did that earlier than most people in this building. So I'm pretty proud of the fact that I have a staff that's a veteran staff in, in leadership in, in my D.C. office and in my district office, and the operation runs pretty smooth. I mean, look, we haven't had real complaints other than from organized uh, uh, anti-George Santos groups. Obviously, I didn't win my seat unanimously with every single vote in the district. I had people who opposed me, but uh, we do the best, and we're open to everybody. And I look, the thing I like to do the most is serve the people uh, and talk. Do you expect the expulsion vote to pass? 
In regards to the allegations that you bring up in the ethics report, though, these are items that you could easily say did not happen, that you have not participated in any of these things. So why are you waiting until after this vote comes down to actually address these major uh, issues? I didn't say I didn't say I was waiting for the vote to come down. Well, it's coming down. I have. I understand. I'm doing this in a different schedule. It's not the schedule of the House or the expulsion. You already well, you got had a months. Do you, you, do you, ahead, do you expect the expulsion vote to pass? And if so, why do you think this time? I don't know. Look, from what I understand, the way I'm looking at this is uh, Congressman Lolota said he has 150 votes. So, I mean, if he has 150 votes, as he said already on the record, he has the votes. This is this is just plain and simple. Why do you think the votes have changed? Thank you. So there's 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 quite a few members that say they won't vote for this. Do you have a message to them? I know you. Oh, look, I, I've spoken to a lot of members. I don't ask people to come in my defense. I do not ask people to advocate for me. I've kept that. I did not whip this. I didn't whip it the first two times. And I, I stay steadfast on that because I think this is my battle and I don't want to I don't want to drag people into the fray of this entire nonsensical operation right now. Uh, so I, I thank them for their courage because it takes courage these days to stand up for for people, especially in my position. So I thank them. And, and these are people that I, I will never forget. Congressman, you said this has been a year from hell for you. All right, so you've been listening to Representative George Santos speak outside the Capitol building. The House could vote to expel him at any time, maybe today. Some are saying possibly tomorrow. We'll bring you those updates as we get them. Keep in mind here, this congressman has been charged with conspiracy, wire fraud, false statements, falsification of records, aggravated identity theft, credit card fraud. Now, he's not been charged yet, but his own members of the Republican Party, especially on New York and Long Island, want him out. This expulsion vote is coming basically from his own colleagues. But you can take his comments for what they're worth, and we will, of course, continue to update you on that situation uh, as it warrants.